Hey, what's up all you art geeks out there? Today we're gonna talk a little bit about what is the easiest way to draw a portrait. There's a lot of methods out there. There's the Loomis method, there's the Riley method, there's the Asaro method, there's the shape-based method, blocking methods all over the place. We're gonna talk about one in particular. We're gonna talk about the one that ChatGPT mentions here. Now I did go ahead and I asked ChatGPT this very question. What is the easiest way to paint a portrait freehand? Now it did give me a pretty decent answer. It's very similar to the method I like to use. Now before we get into that, I do wanna quickly mention that I do have a Patreon account with a bunch of portrait painting tutorials, art downloads, a bunch of things that will help you through your oil painting journey. Now back to what we we're talking about. What is the easiest way to paint a portrait freehand? And ChatGPT, right off the bat, it starts with this. Painting a portrait freehand can be a rewarding experience, and while there's no single easy way, here are some simplified steps to help guide you through the process. Then it gets into some materials, the materials you need to be a painter, canvas, panels, things like that. It does mention paints, which could be acrylics, oils, watercolors. I've tried out a few different mediums, but I love oils myself personally. That's my go-to medium for creating portraits. I just love how they blend together. I love that it stays wet so I can paint wet into wet. I love that about oil paints. Next is brushes. I personally like to use flat brushes, usually long flat brushes from Trakel are my go-to brush. Palette, we do need a palette. You have to mix your paint somewhere, so get a palette. It could be just a piece of wood that's been sealed. It could be a piece of plastic. It could be a piece of glass. So many different options for your palette. A palette knife for mixing, it says here it's optional, but you definitely need a palette knife, in my opinion, if you're gonna mix your paints. I know some people do just mix their paints with their brushes, but for me personally, it's not even an option. You need a palette knife if you're gonna mix some paints. The next one on the list is water or paint Thinner. Okay, well, yes, you do need some thinner of some kind. Now, for my practice, I like to use linseed oil. I like to use a mix of stand oil and odorless mineral spirits. That's in about a 50 to 50 ratio. You can go thinner than that and use more odorless mineral spirits. If you do go past 50% with the stand oil, it could get a little bit too thick and you may find that it just takes way too long to dry. So try to start with the 50-50 mix and then you can always dilute it some more with the odorless mineral spirits. The next one is sketching pencil. Okay, well, I don't use a sketching pencil. I use a brush to sketch. I use a brush to start off, like this painting. I start with a lot of the overall general shapes, and that is something we're gonna talk about a bit more. But I use a brush through the whole process. If you feel more comfortable with a pencil, try a pencil. For me, I just like the simplicity of sticking with the same drawing utensil throughout the whole process. So try every method that's out there for the initial sketching phase. But we're gonna go ahead now and get into these 10 steps, and we may skip a couple. There may be a couple in here that are just kind of pointless and we'll just go right by them. Now the first one looks to be one of those we can skip right by. Number one is prepare your workspace. This is pretty obvious. Yes, you need to have your workspace set up. You need to have your paints and your canvas, all those things near you. We're gonna go ahead and fly right by that one. Number two is choose a reference photo. And this is a big subject. I could make a video just on reference photos. I like to personally have my own models come in. I get photos of them with some really good dramatic lighting. Don't use the flash on your camera. That will flatten out all the lighting. If you work on commissions, this can get a little tricky because if you have a client that gives you a photo to use and it's really flat, it does make the painting process more tedious in my opinion because you're working with very clamped down values. So if you can, always suggest to your client that you take the photo so that you can get the lighting you want. Unfortunately, there are times when these are presents to people and they wanna make it a surprise, so you're kind of stuck with the photos they have. But you can always ask the client, hey, could you maybe just snap a few photos of the person and make it seem like you're just taking photos for your own needs and just try to get some lighting that has a bit more shadows. You can always try that. It may not work out, but the more shadows you have going across the face, the easier it is to paint, in my opinion. Now the next thing, once you have photos, it's about getting that photo prepped and ready to go. I like to personally bring my photos usually into Photoshop to crop them to the size that I want so that I don't have to think about that when I start painting. During that cropping process, you can really start to test things out, see what works, what doesn't work. 
It's a lot easier than starting a painting, getting a couple hours into it and realizing, oh my gosh, I gotta start over, this thing's a little too high. Even just one inch too high can really make a difference as far as the composition of your final painting. So use Photoshop if you wanna save some time and make sure that everything looks right once you've cropped it and then get started with your painting. All right, so number three, this is where we start talking about how we go about drawing the shapes. And it does say sketch the basic shapes. And when it comes to sketching, there are a lot of different ways to sketch, just like we talked about a second ago with sketching with a pencil, with a paintbrush. I personally like using a paintbrush, and that's how I get started. Now for me personally, I usually use shapes and a few lines here and there. It's usually primarily just shapes, so I'll start with the darkest shapes I see. I'll, I'll take a step back, look at it from a distance so that I can see those general overall shapes in the shadows and I'll start wherever the most obvious point would be. Usually it's one of the bigger shapes that's easier to just recognize right off the bat, like the forehead. Then I'll start drawing all the shadows in one shot, and it's usually not perfect. There's always something wrong. You just wanna get something on the canvas or on the panel to get you going. Then I will jump over to the bright side and repeat the same steps. Now, depending on the portrait and how the lighting is set up, you may see a mix of about three or so general tones. Some are in the shadows, some are in the mid-tones, some are in those really bright highlighted areas. And you'll just wanna go through step by step. Start with the dark, then the mid-tone obvious shapes, get those in place, then get the obvious bright areas done. And once you're done with all that, you will realize that it doesn't look like much. It's not gonna look very accurate, but this is where you can start using a comparison method of looking at your portrait and looking at what you've painted so far and start molding things into place. And this is what I consider the block in stage, which looks like it's number four on the list from ChatGPT is block in the base colors. I guess we already talked about this. So just like I said, block in the darks, the midtones, the lights, and get those general shapes in place. And that's sort of your first rendering pass. That's why I like to consider it as a first rendering pass to just see where you're at, just to give you an idea of how far off you are. And then we get into some more additional details. All right, number five is focus on values. This one is really important. We're already kind of talking about this with the block in stage where you're getting your darks, your midtones, and your light areas. But for me, the general rule of thumb is start with about three, just get some paint down, get some toning down on your surface so that you can see things a bit more clearly. All right, number six is refine facial features. And this is exactly what you're gonna have to start doing. Once you get those first three colors down, the darks, the midtones, and the lights, this is where you're gonna have to start looking at those shapes within shapes. I usually start blocking in the underside of the nose a bit more, start blocking in where the lips are, start to find where the exact location of the eyes are gonna be, and start really looking at those shapes themselves and make sure that just the individual shape of the eyes, nose, all those little shadows that are happening with all the different elements are accurate and make sure that they all are working with the adjacent shapes and that their locations make sense. And this is where you have to slowly build your accuracy in. Don't get ahead of yourself though. Don't put in too much detail because you might end up finding out that you're a little bit off with everything and everything has to shift around a bit. Now, once all this is done, it's all about just going through, rendering it some more, getting more and more detail, but just make sure to step back a good few feet as far as you can, honestly, and see what you're seeing from that distance. If you don't have a lot of room to step back, take a photo of it and take a look at that smaller image on your phone. You will see a lot of obvious things that you wouldn't see when you're up close. All right, so now the next one is number seven, blend and soften edges. This will require some trial and error on your part to see what kind of softened edges works for your style of painting. The looser your painting is, the more you may have to soften those edges to make everything gel together. All right, now number eight, we have already talked about this one quite a bit, and that is fine tune details. And just like I was saying before, work with the bigger shapes, then the medium shapes, then the smaller shapes, and then those little details come last so that you're not working on something that needs to move later on. You find out that you had a big portion of the face in the wrong spot. So do it in that order. That's where you can also start fine tuning the colors, fine tuning the edges, all of those little things to get that painting exactly where you want it. And this is the point where you decide where to leave some details out. Maybe you wanna leave the areas around the face a little bit looser, but this is where the final touches come into play. Make sure you step back, take a look, take a five minute break, come back and look at it again. I can guarantee you're gonna see something you missed. 
All right, now number nine is add background and final touches. Now the background part, this can happen anytime. I sometimes do the background first because all that negative space around the head is a shape in itself. So you can use that background shape if you've cropped it exactly how you want it in Photoshop. Use your background to help you draw the overall head shape, and then you can start working on the bigger shapes like the forehead, cheeks, the overall shape of the head after you've done the background. And there are times when I do the background during the mid portion of the painting, sometimes at the end, but you don't have to add it at the end just because ChatGPT says so. ChatGPT, it's a computer, it doesn't know everything, so I'm gonna go ahead and ignore ChatGPT about the background coming last. And again, it says final touches, this is something, again, I already talked about, just taking steps back, looking at it from different angles, maybe even rotate your panel 90 degrees, 180 degrees, just to see if there's something compositionally that's not making sense. All these things can help to get those final touches done. And then finally, the most obvious step of all, let it dry. That is very self-explanatory. Now, I think these were some good steps. I think ChatGPT, once again, did a great job. Got a good discussion going. We talked about a method that is very similar to mine. Now, for me personally, the block-in method, the shape-based method of seeing the bigger shapes and working on the shapes within those shapes and just adding detail, doing rendering passes, doing one pass to get the big shapes, the next pass to get the middle shapes or the medium-sized shapes, and then finally those smaller shapes. That is just a method I've found to be comfortable. There are so many other methods out there and so many people will use a combination of different methods. So don't think you have to stick to one particular method. Sometimes I feel like changing it up and I'll add a few extra lines towards the beginning instead of shapes but at the end of the day when you look at a face it is just really a bunch of shapes grouped together like a puzzle so i like to look at it that way try out my tutorials over on my patreon account if you want to learn more about my particular method you will learn a lot about portrait painting you get some art downloads while you're at it so go check that out thank you so much for watching another one of my videos all you art geeks out there i will talk to you again very soon bye